No complaint about, yeah, about Dr. the CBL Dr. Peniel score. Joseph, history professor at Tufts University and author of Dark Days, Bright Nights, From Black Power to Barack Obama. And over on Capitol Hill, NBC's Luke Russert. Here for the uh, political roundtable, he has been there. Hardest working man weekend. on Capitol Hill, ladies and gentlemen. Luke, Luke, Luke uh, give us your thoughts on the weekend, a historic weekend, and you were there all along. Tell us about it. Oh, my God. Yeah, I was here for about, uh, I think, 17 hours yesterday, Joe. Absolutely unbelievable uh, turn of events up here on Capitol Capitol Hill. I would say, though, we, on Friday, we started to really get a sense from Democrats that they were quite optimistic that this thing was going to pass. That's when we're hearing now the real stupac negotiations were taking place. Uh, Saturday, obviously, the president was up on Capitol Hill rallying the troops. I find it really interesting that during that meeting, Bart Stupak was in his office writing his language that he wanted in this executive order. It came down to some White House lawyers and Bart Stupak bringing those eight uh, pro-life Democrats on board. They probably could have gotten to the Magic 216 without them, but that gave them a nice big cushion, got them up to 222, 223. They gave about four, three or four members political cover. Absolutely amazing turn of events up here on Capitol Hill, Joe. And uh, every Democrat that I have spoken to has a big sigh of relief that this is over. One member I spoke to last night is saying, I'm happy. I don't have to talk about this in my district. But at the end of the day, I'm a lot sorry, of Democrats I'm sorry. are also what, what, happy I'm that sorry, they can Luke, run on something. Luke, yeah. what, did they say, I'm glad I don't have to talk about this in my district anymore? Correct. This a is lot of all, okay. can you tell that member, this is all they're going to be talking about <laughs> however, for the rest of the year. However, however, <laughs> a lot of other members are saying, I'm happy that I have a significant piece of legislation to hang my hat on. Yeah. The only things that really got through the House and the Senate were Lily Ledbetter and the stimulus. I'd rather run on a moral issue like health care, yeah. uh, one that I can really uh, okay. you know, make okay. sort of a, yep. an argument between life it. or death for people right. and helping out those. But, but, but you know, you know me, there are a lot of people that think, oh, we voted on this. We don't have to worry about it. Oh, <laughs> oh this is oh, where yeah. the real worrying begins, I Mika. I think there may be some, <laughs> yeah. some dark days ahead. But let's talk to Dr. Peniel Joseph about that. Uh, you participated in the Left Forum. Yep. It's one of uh, an effort to move the president's yep. agenda forward. This will help in some ways. There will be some bumps along the road politically. But how do you think he can use this to perhaps jumpstart other initiatives? Well, I think people at that forum really wanted health care to be passed. And uh, yesterday was the biggest um, legislative day that we've had in American history since 1965. One thing that we haven't talked about is this is the 45th anniversary of the Selma to Montgomery uh, demonstrations where Congressman John Lewis was beaten uh, March 7th, Sunday, 1965. We call it Bloody Sunday. There was a second march, uh, Tuesday, uh, March 9th, and then finally a, a four-day march from March 21st to March 25th, 1965. And Dr. King makes a very famous speech in Montgomery where he talks about the very meaning of American American democracy and obviously in March of 1965 Lyndon Johnson makes a very famous speech to Congress where he talks about we shall overcome so mm -hmm. in a way people at the left forum wanted Obama to live up to the rhetoric of the campaign in 2008 where he quoted Martin Luther King uh, consistently with the fierce urgency of my, now when he said the reason why he was running for president was because of the moral imperatives of the civil rights movement and in a way 45 years later I think people see okay. health care as Let a new civil this. rights I, I, I understand can I, can that. I, yeah, go ahead, Luke. No, jump in. I just, on, on that point, uh, I really think it's interesting this week how much uh, you really had that sense of the civil rights movement. Yeah. Jim Clyburn on Saturday said to reporters, and very, very powerfully, <laughs> words that resonated with a lot of us, that he goes, I heard things from the Tea Party on Saturday that I had not heard since I was in South Carolina trying to get from the back of the yeah. bus to the front. It really became a bigger issue with Democrats, and maybe just more than health Healthcare, this real moral imperative, like the professor says, yesterday, totally uh, sporadically, uh, okay. John Lewis, Nancy Pelosi, Steny uh, Hoyer, John Larson, lo locking arms, walking across Independence Avenue yes. in a show that they say we weren't intimidated by the Tea Party. Really amazing um, stuff. You All right, know, but, uh, hold on, hold yeah, well, on. I, was, I, I know, I've been hearing all of this. This reminds me of my good friend, and he is my good friend. <laughs> John uh -oh, Lewis. Uh -oh. Whenever they say he is my but good this, friend, I, 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 it's me I, I, of when John Lewis job, compared Newt Gingrich <laughs> to Bull Connor because, because we were increasing school lunch menus by 4.5% funding instead of 6%. Come on. To compare what happened in Selma in 1965 with a bill as bad as this bill that that, that makes money for insurance companies, that cuts deals with Big Pharma, the Cornhusker kickback, we can do the litany of it. 
I mean, how can you even draw a comparison with the civil rights movement in 1965 and this hulking, swathful beast of a bill? Dr. Well, Dr. Yeah, Pernilla. one of the things I'll remind everybody, historically, when we look at the 64 Civil Rights Act and the 65 Voting Rights Act, there were critics to the right and left of those bills. Some people on the left said the bills didn't go far enough. Some people on the right said it was, it was, over, it was overreach. It was too much federalism. Now we come to look at those bills as a moral and political good. You were comparing this, though, to the rights of African Americans to be able to go to the same schools that white kids went to, or drink from the same water fountains, or go to the same restrooms, or eat at the same lunch counters no. as whites? Joe, it's there, not a one-on-one -on -one comparison. Is there a moral comparison? Are these even in the same moral universe? In terms of expanding American democracy, absolutely. When we think about 1965, that wasn't just about black people or white people. It was about the very structure and vision of our democracy and what citizenship meant for everyone. And even globally, the world was looking at the United States. And we think about 1965, we became a better country because of the Voting Rights Act. And the moral imperative behind Lyndon Johnson, um, Martin Luther King Jr., and the grassroots struggle for democracy transformed the way America is looked at okay. the world over. All right, well, uh, the majority of my time in Congress uh, talking about health care, but thank you for, for playing my straight man this morning. <laughs> yes. One thing I will say is that we're losing Using a larger picture of the impact of this, in 1965, Lyndon Johnson talked about a great society. And when we think about 2010, the notion that Ameri 32 million Americans who are uninsured will have insurance leads us closer to that great society. In 2008, candidate Barack Obama talked about towards a more perfect union. And he talked about the evolution of American democracy and a way in which this democracy is constantly evolving, hopefully for the better. I think what we saw yesterday was a huge step forward um, a progressive step that really we think about a country that likes to celebrate its achievements and pat itself on the back sometimes unearned victories unearned celebrations yesterday was a was a day to pat uh, America on the back for moving us closer to a more perfect okay. union all right I, a, I, a I think slog. yesterday was a day that uh, the uh, health care system uh, was additionally burdened the health care system